But um, thanks for finding some time at your lunchtime uh, break. And um, I'm sure it's gonna be a super in inspiring and interesting interview for, for all the ones that are following us and the ones that will watch the video later. Um, I would like to briefly introduce you, but I actually, I think it's gonna be better if you introduce yourself. Just briefly say, saying that we have a, I think an interesting um, yeah, guest this, this week because she's, She's, she's very international just for the fact that she has double nationality. You know, she's half Greek, half Spanish. Uh, so I'm not sure if you were born in Greece and raised in Spain, the other way around. Uh, just just tell us a little bit about your, your background. So you're right, I'm, I'm both a national in Spain and Greece. I was uh, born and raised in, in Spain. Uh, okay. but I, I got to travel a lot, like every year. Uh, back and forth in Greece, so it's been like kind of a very close relationship. So and you're completely yeah. bilingual, right? If I if I read correctly in your LinkedIn, you speak uh, five different languages, and and that's that's really impressive. You are not that you know you're pretty young, so that is part yeah, of yeah. the deal, I you guess. Can, yeah, you can always try. I mean, anyone who speaks more than three can probably agree with me that. It's just so hard that languages are one thing that once you don't uh, practice it, you start losing it. So some of these languages, I obviously don't speak as fluently anymore. Uh, I never got them to be at the same level, but it's always good to get that going. Uh -huh. because early in your career, you never know where you're gonna end, right? You never know if English is gonna be useful for you. Some people for uh, French, uh, other languages are always a good plus to have. Yeah, and, and in Spain, you are from Barcelona, I mean, from Catalonia, right? So you speak right. Catalan, and I'm sure that that helped you towards French, that I know that you also speak. Am yeah, that's funny. My, yeah, my family speaks French, so it's kind of... Oh, a... really? Oh, okay. It's not just because of the similarities between the two languages. It's because of your family as well. Okay. It's just that it's funny because I obviously don't speak a word of Catalan, but um, um, I did my Erasmus. For those who are now European, and Erasmus is a scholarship that you do during your last years of a career, and you choose a university in Europe to pursue one year of your career, and uh, I chose Paris. And so, um, you know, there were a lot of students from all over Europe and, and many friends that I made uh, during that time were from Catalonia. And after a few months speaking French, I had learned French in school and so on. I was like, I can understand them. I mean, you know, there, there were many, many common things. So um, I definitely agree with you that as soon as you are kind of fluent and proficient with one language, uh, you know, uh, that helps towards others. So that's another, plus I guess of getting or gaining experience overseas, right? That is not only the professional and, and, and personal experience, but also the, uh, the cultural and, and language wise experience. Yeah, you gotta get yourself immersed into the culture and actually understand how people think, not only how people speak. So that's, that's usually very important. I found that at the beginning, even though I, I was like a straight A student in some of these languages, when I came in, that was a very hard, thing for me to get used to actually working in English, especially in a field that's so specialized in architecture, you're kind of like building it, from, you're building it from scratch. You have to do a very strong effort to get yourself catching all these terms uh, happening around you. So I found that at the beginning, the sketching and the drawing uh, helped me a lot communicate with my peers. Um, so that was so you didn't open you didn't you, you didn't really speak much you were just communicating through through your art through through your sketching I did it just they they were going things were moving so fast especially in SOM that you really needed an extra layer of, inf of information or just documentation to keep all these things that were coming your way um, yeah 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 so, yeah. That's interesting, but let's let's go back to your origin. So yes, you 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 were raised, born and raised in Spain, uh, and I know that you study at the uh, Polytechnique in Barcelona. But um, tell us a little bit briefly about yourself. Like um, you know, where were your interests at that time? 
you know, um, what you were um, expecting to happen once you were out of school, if you were already planning all what you have accomplished in such a short career to date, just put us in context a little bit and we'll dig in it. Yeah, just so that everyone understands a little bit on, on where I stand right now. I'm, I graduated from school on my undergrad in 2015. Uh -huh. um, I got my first master's in 2016 um, with the University of Politanco Barcelona. Then I pursued an, a second master in uh, BIM management right after that. So I have had a little bit of different layering in education. I have found that at the beginning, the first five years were a little bit of immersion in how things were and a lot of different topics. I did collaborate with some of my design professors in some competitions outside of the school. So that helped me a lot with uh, Ramon Sanabria and uh, Tony Gironez was also another student that I worked with. So having that early education and experience helped me put everything in context, which is something that I always recommend a lot of people to do, just not stay uh, all in school, just do things on the side to get to know yourself a little bit better and see and what things you like. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I was going to say that that is actually not that common, especially in in some European countries. I mean, I know that in the UK and in the US, that's part of the system. Like you do your part one or, you know, some years your bachelor's and then you are forced by the system to actually gain professional experience. And then you go back to school to do your master's and then you gain experience again before getting licensed. And I think that even though it can be seen as a pain <laughs> or, a, or a painful process because you are constantly you know, pushing yourself and, and, you know, towards gaining educational education while you are practicing, that enrich you as, a, as, as the architect you're going to become tremendously. I mean, um, I guess that you agree with me because you, 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 it's what you experienced, but was that by chance? Because I know that you're experiencing um, I don't want to say it wrong, Tony Gironez, it was through the uh, Santander scholarship. It was just because you wanted or because you knew that that was going to be something definitely positive for your, for your future career to combine. Really? Yeah, that's a good question. Certainly at the beginning, uh, it was a little bit more by chance, like connections that I had made offered me to collaborate in certain things. So mm -hmm. it was a bit less, um, um, made on purpose. Uh, I did find out though that a lot of those experiences taught me a lot about myself and with Santander um, collaboration was um, a way to also, also keep me busy. That usually would happen in the summers. I would take the summers and do those experiences and try to learn from it. Uh, it kind of became a, a very strong um, relationship for me and I learned a lot from it, a lot from my peers, a lot from um, collaborating with a uh, some of the consultants. So that was kind of the first real um, mm -hmm. construction experience that I got. Um, so at the beginning, certainly a lot of things, you never know what you're going to get. It can be less intentional. It's when you know and you have all these things going for you that you can actually start to pick and choose and you actually know which works for you. It's not like, I think this is going to work for me. Um, you actually know what's, what's the right path for you to go. So it actually helps you to start realizing yourself what type of architect you want to become um, subconsciously, right? I mean, just That's by right. the hands-on uh, kind of experience, you all of a sudden realize, actually, this is the path I want to move forward or no, I'm not interested in this type of architecture or this type of, uh, you know, uh, practicing. So that's actually very interesting. I mean, that is one of them, the, the key recommendations I always give when, when I'm invited to lecture at universities here, especially in, in, in Spain or anywhere, but uh, like try to combine, try to gain as much real experience as possible while you are studying it. It will help you towards, you know, going through your career in a more relaxed way, you know, when you are only within the academics bubble, all of a sudden everything is like overwhelming and a critique seems to be like, you know, the thing. And once you have kind of helped yourself uh, building your criteria based on gaining that experience, 
you know, somehow you, you, you start accepting that, you know, that criticism in a more positive way, but you are also filtering and screening what part of it, it actually goes with you and what I appreciate that, but actually I don't agree with you, regardless you are, you know, my tutor or whatever. And that gives you some sort of power that, I don't know, it helps you a lot um, to, you know, uh, not to only accomplish uh, milestones in your career, but also to face hardships, like academic hardships or professional hardships. So uh, that's a very interesting, interesting yeah. point. I do think we agree on one thing, it's that you should not take yourself too seriously at the beginning. You should be um, a little bit flexible and let yourself explore certain things, something that just straight out of the educational system, you're gonna know exactly what works for you. It happens a lot that we have a lot of people coming out of school and thinking what it is, and you actually need to see it in action to actually know what the work is like. So that that's an important thing I would say, just don't, close yourself at the beginning, just just give it a try. And you may find that depending on who you work with, that also makes a huge difference. Yeah. It's almost like when you start working with Revit or with Navis Works or with any of these three-dimensional um, tools or softwares that you realize, oh my God, I was sure that this section was working perfectly well structure-wise and MEP-wise, but no, you know, my beam is actually crossing a huge <laughs> core or vertical system. And well, it's, 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 it's something similar. I mean, you, you just grow academically with your idea, with your frame of what the profession is gonna look like. It necessarily doesn't have to be completely different, but obviously, you know, there are going to be a lot of adjust adjustments to that uh, first impression. So that's interesting. And I was going to say that, um, what was the reason why you decided to actually get a specialized in Revit? I mean, do you, do you work between the two masters for some period of time or do you just jump from one to the other? So that, that's a really good question. Actually, I started thinking about getting that master after my first experience with SOM. I was a summer intern. So I did get like my first crash course on getting to work with Revit without knowing that much about it. And I did realize that there's no way you can master knowledge if you don't master the tools, right? So it was an opportunity that came my way that I could work and do the master at the same time. And not necessarily that means I need to specialize in it, but I do need to know my tools. And when those tools are not made for the purpose that I need them to be, I need to know how to craft my own tools, right? A lot of uh, carpenters and a lot of people working on hand working skills usually value their tools in other very high standard. And we should be thinking about those things the same way. We need to know what's happening in the black box to actually understand uh -huh. how, what comes in and what comes out and how we can learn from it. That's, that's interesting. And um, so basically just to put the timeline, so you finish uh, school, uh, while doing school, you gain some professional experience through this scholarship and other opportunities that you, that came your way through uh, connections and so on. And then you did a summer internship at SOM. Did you just apply yourself or did you, I mean, through the career side or how, how did it happen? I'm sure that many people watching us today are like, how do you made it, you know, make it? Because I would love to intern even for three months as a, as a, as a firm like SOM. You know, my, my story is a little bit of an unusual one. I just was out of, almost out of my of my education uh, period. And I was like, I want to do something different. I want to go outside. I want to get experience. I did apply to a lot of countries and a lot of different jobs. Okay. Um, if I told you the number, you'd be thinking I'm crazy, but I just went for it. And I just made a list of another, another around. determined person guys. I mean, it, determination yeah. has been like a very common aspect or feature of all our guests in the interview series. Like, there's no space for complainers. There's no, there's no time for that. I mean, regardless of the global pandemic right now, regardless of the um, economic crisis, you know, I experienced when I finished school, regardless, if you want 
um, make it and you know, you know where you want to get there. You just have to build the steps in between A and B and it will happen eventually. It will happen. Sorry, I cut you off again. Sorry. No, 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 that's fine. I was going to say maybe the, the thing that I've talked about with my supervisors and the people who recruited me, which eventually became my peers and my colleagues, was that they were really impressed at the, at the portfolio. That was the thing. Like, I think we got selected among a lot of people. And they did say that the portfolio kind of told a story. So when they saw the portfolio, it was telling them who I was, what I was caring about, how I was crafting all those materials and how I understood ideas and how I communicated ideas. Because there's one thing that I would say it's most important about architecture is how, how we communicate and how we make uh, those ideas come across anyone. And there's nothing better than images that transcend all these barriers and the, the languages that we just may not know. Oh my God, uh, you're touching such a oops, critical point because um, you know I, 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 I never get uh, tired of uh, highlighting enough how important is the portfolio for an architect. I mean, a business card is like a joke in comparison to a portfolio. I mean, like a portfolio is, is not only uh, the summary of your work, it's actually like a, like a scan of who you are as a professional and, and how, you, how you see life you know, through the architect's eye, how you approach to society, how you, is, 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 I mean, it has so many layers that, um, you know, we, we have all these programs that uh, help uh, young, young architects that haven't experienced putting together their, their projects because for some reason, I don't get why, you know, there's not like a specific course while you are still in school you know, to actually craft and to build your arguments, as you were saying, to market yourself the best in the best possible way and also to articulate your ideas and your perception of the world through architecture, you know, and through your projects. And so this is, this is such a hot topic for me and, and uh, we might invite you to one of our next workshops because um, I think that you have a lot to say about that and that will, give us like another hour of, of talking. But um, that's, that's interesting. And, and, and going, to, going back again to your time at SOM, so you, I, don't, I think that you didn't get to respond to me, how did you actually get the, the, the first internship? Did you just apply? I just, I just, I pretty much just applied and, and the portfolio, they like the portfolio. That, that's a story. There's no big story. Okay. No, 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 no. That's enough. I mean, but what about, what about the, um, because that's true. I mean, if you get to, if you get the, 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 the eyes to look at your portfolio and have a good portfolio, you're in. I mean, you're in at least for the selection process of the interviews. No, no, no question about that. But the problem is that with companies like SOM, large you know, structures, very prestigious, well-known and so on, they might get hundreds of applications, right? So is there any recommendation that you follow in terms of, I don't know, what you said? I mean, did you apply with an email or you follow up? Or did you try to reach out to someone through LinkedIn at the same time? I don't know. Did you follow any specific, I mean, a strategy or it was that, you know, you were lucky and, and, and actually someone got to see your portfolio? I think not, not looking at my personal experience, I would say connections with people are usually more important than if you cannot get that portfolio in front of them or it's like 400 people applying for something, which sometimes it's very difficult. It I would say you need to make sure that you are brief, that what you are showing is relevant. Maybe I would say research a little bit on what that office or that firm is doing specifically at that point in time to be more relevant in applying to it so that they can connect you with what kind of task you could be doing. I would also talk about who you are, what interests you, um, make it a little bit of a, of a story. And yes, if you get it. into any of the events that the firms organize, like uh, uh, Q and A's, um, open events that the firm does that are all of them are going to be virtual right now because we are in a, in a work. Like the shadow, shadow shape program, right? That, yeah. 
Uh, if it's you're so important to participate in those things, yeah. Yeah, if you're interested, interested guys, uh, and if um, you haven't seen it, uh, we posted, I think last week in our blog, uh, architect US does, I mean, dot com does blog, um, just the information that Eftalia kindly shared with us about this Sarosip program. And it's an, a perfect opportunity for you to, you know, for your portfolio to land on a, you know, supervisor or, or a decision maker's desk. And, or just to start, you know, the, 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 the networking with someone at the firm that might be the point of contact that you can just send a quick email just saying, hey, I just submit my application through your career portal. It will be amazing if you can give me a hand and, and just mention that I apply, you know, to one of your supervisors or you never know. And, and normally I think that architects were very, uh, what's the word? We are like a tribe, tribal, I don't know, if, I don't know, tribe, like a tribe. I'm, I'm, I'm making up the word, sorry. Uh, and, and, and I think that we are very collaborative um, it's part of our uh, ADN. So we will be always, I don't know, at least it's, it's my personal experience. I remember being at HOK, also a large corporate um, firm, I don't know, making so many different uh, strategies to don't burn the HR director, but at the same time trying to help my counterparts, right? And, and, and I'm sure that, you know, if you build your relationship uh, with with someone from from the company might eventually be able to help you. Um, and so, after your three months, because it was meant to be only three months, right? But you ended up staying for almost a year. Is is that correct? After that, yeah, it was almost a year. Okay, yeah, but I mean, it was there, there was like a gap, or you just extended your internship. They offer you to stay for longer. They did offer me to stay just because I was graduating, the position was different, so I was no longer an intern, but it was okay. continuing. Yeah. Okay, and you stay, then you move back to Spain to finish your, your, your thesis project. And at some point, why did you decide, okay, I wanna, I guess that you build your, you know, reputation within the firm and they were happy with you. Always, always, always guys, leave the door open. You know, uh, you never know, that's super important. But I mean, um, what made you choose, okay, let's, let's go back to SOM or let's explore another firm, another country. What, what, what was that decision based on? To me, if I, if I had to give you one reason, it would be because of the people, usually. Like okay. you, can, you can land anywhere, any firm, and the people make the experience completely different is that people at the beginning when you're an entry level is the people willing to teach you is the people willing to listen to you to answer your questions to to let you explore to include you that's so important at the beginning so having that support and having all of that going was critical and it was not because it was SOM really it was all about the people okay okay yeah so at the very beginning maybe you chose SOM because it was part of your um influence i think that i read in your uh, questionnaire uh that from the very beginning you know you you had the eye put on it so i'm because uh somehow you know you relate to the type of architecture they do in terms of detailing very rigorous i mean uh if you have seen guys the um the uh, blog that we briefly wrote or in our social media we posted some of uh some images, well, images, drawings from Eftalia's portfolio, you will, you will understand what we're talking about. Um, it's very sophisticated, it's beautiful. I mean, your drawings are, are, are fantastic. Um, and, and so you also mentioned uh, that um, it was very important for you overcoming your own kind of success and try to uh, recreate it in others. So that, that takes me to the concept of mentoring that I think is actually something very common in the American methodology and not so common uh, in Europe, in, in some, depending on the type of uh, office, but I mean, it's not that widespread for sure. And so have you found opportunities within SOM to actually develop your mentorship skills, even though you are, you know, well, now you are a senior architect, but you know, at your early, early career? Yeah. I. 
I'm currently get, stepping into that role. I used to be the one being mentored until now. So we are trying to get a lot more people involved in, in mentoring others. And it usually works that way. You're mentoring the person above you and you're mentoring the person under you. And even if that's not said anywhere, that's usually how it happens. And that's the most healthy way to do it. Because oh, yeah. if you have someone to hire up, it's going to be really hard for them to connect with you personally and also explain to you all the gaps that you're missing, but someone who is closer to you, uh, who works with you on a day-to-day -day basis is going to be much more willing to, to mentor you. But it doesn't need to be like your supervisor. A lot of people confuse supervising um, people with their mentors. Mentors is oh, a person that, totally you actually, that you actually pick to help you um, show your path and know if you are on the right target if you should be doing things differently that usually has ex more experience than you and gives you a very uh, honest piece of advice on what you're doing and it's usually it does, doesn't have anything to do with your promotion as well so oh, you yeah. can be honest with them about your challenges and things that concern you it's a very transparent relationship there's no yeah um exchange i guess in the relationship i mean the mentor is mentoring you because of you know they they, they want to um kind of set some light on your career or share their experience you know in order to help you with some hardships that they might have already faced or just help you out when you get you know stuck at some point uh, versus your supervisor is the one who's going to be deciding whether you deserve a raise whether you deserve responsibilities you know what type of role fits more with your kind of um, skill. So it's, it's completely different. Um, but um, so what sort of opportunities per se do, do, you, do you have at SOM to mentor? I mean, is there a specific program for it? Or it's just that someone just comes to your, you know, comes to you just because uh, they like how you speak in public when you do a presentation and they want to just exchange ideas. Or is, is there a formal, I guess what I'm asking, is there a formal, formal format or program for these mentorship opportunities? We do have the year one program, which is specifically meant for people who are right out of school so that we can uh, walk them through all the steps, not only in mentoring them as professionals, but also okay. licensure, all the um, oh, research that we are doing, they usually help a lot with the research and we try to pair them. They are actually paired with someone. So you have those connections and you actually are not just brought into the, the corporate office, let's, let's say, and you don't know anyone and you don't know who to go to. You have that person uh, who is with you. So that's a formal program we have. Okay, okay. And do you collaborate? Are you aware of or familiar with ACE? Uh, Architecture, Construction, Engineering Mentorship Program? No? You, 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 we, do, we do. We do have some people who participate in that. Okay. Yes, I haven't, but we do have people. Okay. Because that. That, that is the program that I joined uh, to help mentoring. Uh, but it was, it's, it's a very specific. It's for, for, for just to give some context to the people. Um, it's a specific program for uh, high school students uh, that are about to finish high school and they don't really know yet what path to pursue uh, professional wise. And so they, they have some interest in architecture, but they don't really know what, you know, the profession it can be. And it's super interesting because, you know, you get to kind of develop a project like you will be doing at school. So you give them a subject or a topic, you know, they have to do the site zoning studies, uh, you know, the massing, I mean, like a real project. And, and it's, it's very rewarding. So, so any, any opportunity guys that you come across with in terms of, you know, contributing with, whatever experience or knowledge you have, regardless of what level you are, because sometimes we think that you can only, you know, um, provide something when you are at a very senior level. That's not true. I mean, as you said, there's going to be always someone, unless you're, you're literally starting, uh, underneath you. And, and, and you might think that what you know is irrelevant, but it might mean, you know, a lot to that person at that moment. So... I think it's a nurturing kind of cycle 
uh, and yeah. very rewarding. So, and have you actually found mentors, uh, but not supervisors, going to what we just discussed, um, that, um, you know, help you throughout your career within SOM? Because in a, in a, in a corporate that is very business oriented, sometimes it's difficult to believe, even though I know it's not true, but for, for outsiders, they, they might think that corporate is only about money and making business, and which is an important part of the, of the culture, but, but that's not true. I mean, you mentioned you found many, well, many, a few really impeccable professionals, right? Do you find that support as well? I do. I would say it's changed a lot since speaking with people who have been in the in the firm longer than I am. Um, it is. It has changed a lot. A lot of uh, leadership has gotten younger, so we do have that generational connection with the leadership, and we do have that people going. And actually, if I had to say something about that, one of the best part is the people. So we do have uh, that people, and I, at least I have that people that support me and have been good mentors to me. That's awesome. I mean, and, and speaking about their people, the retention rate of their staffing is pretty high too, right? I mean, uh, people start a professional career, they can be many years within SOM. So you can al also see these type of uh, firms as a, you know, like another academic kind of period of your life because you can actually grow your career uh, within it. And actually, do you see yourself, um, well, I don't know if this put you in a, in a difficult position, but I mean, would you, would you like to actually grow uh, and, and go up the ladder? Because I want you to tell us, well, how you started at SOM and the current role, but do you actually see yourself five years time or 10 years time, you know, gaining like a more responsi responsible um, role within the firm? I would say if, if I didn't believe so, I wouldn't be where I am. Like at the moment, I don't think something is worth it. I would just leave. Yeah. If, I, if I'm investing my time right now, which is a very crucial time of our lives, like the time frame in between 25 and 35, which is where you actually set yourself up to specialize and get all that experience. If you invest that time, it's because you, you think it's worth it. So that, that would be a strong yes for me. And how has been your, your evolution? So you started at, as an intern or entry level? And, and how, how, how did it happen and how fast it happened? Just to give you know, um, the people watching us today how, how all this uh, can be put in a timeline context. I would probably, again, I would not be the best example and I would need to put myself in context because I, I came okay. in as an intern in 2016. Um, I, oh, wow. Four, year, four years ago. Then I got transitioned into entry level because I graduated at the end of that same year. So 2016, 2017. I came back, I left in 2017 and came back as an architectural professional, which was the level above myself. Um, the entry level in 2018 and I got promoted to senior architectural professional at the beginning of this year so it's been like around four years and a promotion per year yeah wow <laughs> it, it also is also is also true that I'm a designer mostly and, and certain different paths let's say or technical or other types of roles may require uh, More. different steps for you, but um, we have been doing a, a lot of good job and great work, and it's been it's been going great. So it's been yeah. a little bit of a of a rapid. Path. Yeah, but I mean, it, it 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 has been rewarding. But you you did all that work, and 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 obviously you deserve it. But that actually also brings to the table, I think that we, we have touched this, this point in other interviews that, you know, the, one of the greatest things I think uh, from my own uh, experience as well, um, out of the US labor market or the, you know, the architectural industry is that it's a real meritoc meritocracy. So, you know, if you, if you really work hard and you, you know, you, you are, um, 
you know, you bring benefit to, to the team and, and you are proactive and you are always trying to get better and pushing your limits and continue to educate, you know, educating yourself. I mean, there are so many opportunities that are, are, at the same time are happening, but you know, the, the, the eyes within the uh, firms are, are evaluating you and seeing you in the long run as someone that is going to keep, you know, evolving and, and, and bringing things to the table. So um, that's definitely one of the, the greatest things um, out, of, out of the industry. And, and I would say, uh, how, how will you describe, because you just, this, you just mentioned that depending on what group of people you are working at, you know, the, the path might be different or the pace of growth. But uh, how, how a, a firm like SOM is actually organized or managed? How, how many different teams um, you work with on a daily basis? So the DC office is a little bit different. I can tell you a little bit about the firm-wide organization. We have uh, a lot of different departments. We are usually organized around uh, technical design and management at a broad high level. We do have a lot of um, specialists in MA key structural. We have uh, graphics, we have environmental. In house. We have admin, yeah. We have a lot of different departments that are starting to take a lot of uh, leadership into a lot of the things that are happening around us right now. We have planning, uh, design per se, we have technical. Um, so we do have a lot of different specialties that you that you can be part of in, in SOM. The DC office is a little bit smaller, so some of those we collaborate with other offices. Mm -hmm. uh, those are there, certainly. Okay, and you're part of the design design team you mentioned. What, that, that's a really good question. What we are trying to encourage, and that, that has to do with the experience that we gain, is that we are not only designers. We should, we should not be just one thing at the beginning of our careers. We should get all that experience and know uh, from the beginning in, a, in the competition until we actually uh, deliver the documents for permit, how that has to develop so that we make better decisions. Uh, so technically, I'm not specialized yet. That doesn't happen until later on. I see, I see. But is it actually difficult to move from one of those teams or, yeah, uh, specializations to the others? Uh, because my, my own experience is that I landed in the design team as well, but I really wanted to gain construction experience and more like uh, real world uh, experience. And at some point, the only way to actually get that uh, opportunity is that I was gonna get raised and promoted. And I rejected that. And I said, I wanted to, because they want me to do always design because I was good out of it, out of it. but uh, I wanted to actually run a small team and go to the side and, and it's how I, I, get, I got it. And I started going to the, to the field uh, on a weekly basis just for a small uh, project, the refurbishment of um, a New York Press Hospital in downtown Manhattan. But it was an amazing experience, you know, completely new for, for me. So how difficult is actually in RSOM to move horizontally? I think it's always about communication. Like if you make a case that you are missing an important part of your education or experience and that that's making you lack a lot of other uh, qualities, let's say it would be a different question if you would be like, okay, I know design is not for me. I really want to focus in technical, but if you want to get a little bit of a baseline understanding of everything and you need that portion of it, you need to make the case for it. You need to be vocal. Um, organize your thoughts and, and share that and share why, like it needs to be measurable, right? Mm, let's say you design something and down the road in the construction, um, the construction side, you get an RFI and you need to go back and change it. You can make a case to say, if I had known this before, that wouldn't be an issue later. So it's more efficient for us that I actually learn how to be um, involved in those things as well. That's a clever way of, uh, you know, uh, put in uh, in the discussion into the discussion but definitely that's that's also another thing uh, very important in in our career I mean for some reason even though an architect should have you know communication skills no graphic communication skills but also communication 
you know, face to face, uh, public speaking, all that kind of uh, experience. For some for some, some reason, we are not that profession, and so it's something that you it's a muscle that you have to, you know, get better at because that is going to depend on for so many opportunities that might just pass not 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 because you were not ready for the opportunity itself it's just that because you didn't raise your hand and say hey i'm actually interested in taking this role or i would love i would love to learn i would love to contribute you know it is something that i'm seeing is lacking from my you know in my cv and i'm sure that i'm going to be able to contribute or add it to what i am already you know uh, bring it to the table on a daily basis and 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 I'm sure that you know if you build the case as, as you said um, in a good way the opportunity will eventually come so so make it more clever like if Talia said don't reject the race or promotion like I did <laughs> I don't, 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 don't settle don't settle yes exactly don't settle. Um, that's awesome so uh your current role now is uh senior designer professional is it is it that correct? senior senior architectural professional architectural yeah. professional sorry uh yeah and and so because just so you know guys in the us as in the uk you're not allowed to call yourself an architect uh, until you're licensed by uh in the us is by uh is NCARF, right? If I if I'm correct, you get a license there. Yeah. yeah, and so you are in the process of doing that as well. Yeah, I'm right in the process of doing that. Yeah. Wow. How you are actually, um, you know, combining your personal life, working from home, studying from home. I mean, um, how how is it more challenging than before, or how, how are you dealing with it? I think the biggest challenge was that. Um, Part of it is easier because now we're all working from home, so you have less stuff that you can do outside. So in a way, it's like you, you do have yeah. more time in winter. What is am fun. I going to do, right? Let's study. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is challenging sometimes, and you need to be straightforward with your team and say, hey, if I'm going to take these exams, you, you got to organize it in a way that you can study, and that's really challenging, but it can be done. Um, but what was more challenging for us is that the testing got halted because of COVID-19 and now we are waiting for getting the um, oh, right. re remote testing going uh, so we don't have to go to the test centers and wait like long lines and get like appointments scheduled canceled yeah. like, last minute so that, that has been by far the, the biggest challenge for us to get you have been canceled many going. times Mm, I got lucky enough that I was undergoing the testing of my, the evaluation of my education when that okay. started to happen. So I didn't schedule anything, but I know a lot of people had a lot of issues with that. I mean, I went through that process and I can only imagine being like a nightmare, you know, being ready to take those tests and all of a sudden, mm, sorry, it has been canceled. But, you know, I remember those big classrooms with, I don't know, 50 people doing the tests at the same time. So obviously they, they, they might have <laughs> rebump the concept of the exam itself. But I'm curious to hear, so you, you have to keep me posted on how the, the, um, the uh, practic practice or practical exam, I don't recall exactly how they call it. No, the test, the, the multi-choice test, like the, the one that you have to use a software to actually, you know, uh, lay out something out or do the MEP and all that. I remember uh, it was like a almost MS, you know, like a very outdated old fashioned software. So hopefully this time have, you know, has helped them to, to come up with a better, better, um, you know, version of, of the, of the exam. Uh, I don't know how it's going to work. I guess that they will give you some sort of login something like that to, to do? Yeah, I, I'm not too into the details of it. I would say though, and I'm not sure if anyone is aware of this, I, I certainly wasn't when I came in the US, is that, for example, in Spain, when you get, when you get your education done, you can straight go to the, to the... Uh, you can build and sign the, and yeah. Your, your council can get registered. In the US, it's different. You gotta take six exams, it is right now, I believe. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, and you got to get enough experience and if you are a foreign uh, national and you have application in, in the outside of the US, that's an extra step that you need to take. So it, it takes a while to get licensed in the United States. I'm currently pursuing licensure in, in the New York state and each state is different. So you I would have to take another exam, right? In order to be cross evaluated or assessed. Yeah. Yeah, they have to go through your um, educational um, records and you need to send that to them. And just, just for people that you know, it's, it's an extra step that you need to take that you can just not come in and, and straight away be a licensed architect as, as you, we would be in Spain, which is very unusual, I think, because a lot of, not a lot of countries allow you to do that straight no. out of school. I mean, I'm aware of the UK system uh, from the time I was working there that I was very close to start the process, but I didn't in the end. And the US that I did start it and I have to resume that at some point and get finally licensed. But uh, well, best of luck with that, because that's an extra Thank work is, 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 I mean, I'm sure that you will get by, but uh, yeah, you have to be committed and, and very self-disciplined in order to get it out of your way. Um, but um, uh, I would say that uh, I would wrap up this incredible, uh, you know, talk. I think that you have provided so many uh, guidance and recommendations or, you know, good ideas to, to reflect and to follow at some point but is there anything that you would recommend to someone that is like five years ago in your in your career uh thinking i would love to be part of som or like a large structure or i would love to you know do an internship in the us i don't know anything that you would have liked knowing before uh that probably would have helped you more or anything that you would like to share with them that could bring some extra light? I think I would say probably, I wouldn't sugarcoat it, it's not easy, but I would tell you don't let that stop you from doing the things that you love because at the end of the day it's worth it and we do a lot of amazing projects that I wouldn't otherwise be able to do if I was in Spain much likely. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it is hard, it's never easy, if it was easy everyone would do it, right? But if you really want to do it, just go for it and it's going to be pandemic. The pandemic at some point is going to be over. So just, you know, take these as an opportunity to do other things like I'm doing, let's say take exams or um, collaborate with um, other things or just expand your horizon and just don't get discouraged because that's, that's going to keep you going a long way, being excited about it. And that, that's going to probably land you more than one job if you, if you can transmit that excitement to the person in front of you. Oh, definitely. That speaks so much about who you are as a person and that is going to have a, an immediate, you know, impact in the team once you are part of the team, you know, that's, that's a personality, that's, that's a way of, 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 of moving forward. So, uh, Estalia, thank you so much. Um, I could be here another hour talking with you. Uh, I don't know. Let me see if anyone actually, let me, put this up if we have questions here for you you know people tend to be a little bit uh shy and then they email us with the questions once you're not here which is always funny uh but uh this this one guy i don't know if he knows you is saying that you are one of the most passionate individuals i have ever came across in my career uh he is where's my beer <laughs> I, we, we know each other. <laughs> oh, you do? Okay. He's a, he's, a, he's a friend of you. Okay, awesome. So that was a compliment. We accept compliments as well. They, they don't need to be questions. But um, if you guys have any questions, it's the right moment. Uh, well, if, if you want to share with us later, that's fine too. You, you, but remember that you have to be vocal. This is a great moment to start. Um, but uh, we will share them. Well, there are many people here, but uh, say hi, 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 hello, amazing. But I don't see any questions. So anyway, if, if you wanna, um, if you want us to share any questions or comments with Atalia, please uh, don't hesitate to do that. 
the word resolve. And, and, and thank you once again, Eftalia. Um, I hope I haven't taken much of your time. Um, and, and I can wait to see what's next. I mean, I still remember you when you call us, you know, just trying to go back and it's crazy. Oh, we didn't mention that you actually got the old one visa as well. That's uh, right. Yeah, you finished your J-1 visa how many years ago? Two years already or? Yeah, I, I believe that was, yeah, I got my O-1 visa September of last year, yeah. Yeah, well, oh, okay. A year was ago. You know, half ago. Um, so yeah, another great example because many people tend to think that the J-1 is when they see intern trainee, they don't really know what that term means. Um, and they think that they're gonna be just photocopying things or, you know, doing uh, secondary work. And that has nothing to do with what, well, you, you can see all, all, all what I started accomplished within a firm, like a large firm that you might think just by the nature of the, of the company that you're gonna be the last person in the, in, the, in the line. And that has nothing, I mean, nothing to do with reality. I, I had a similar experience and it was fantastic. And so, um, you know, the internal trainee term is mainly immigrational. So don't get discouraged by that. Just think that that's gonna be the passport, a real passport with your visa stamp to, to access. And then if you work hard and, and, and you prove your, yourself and you wanna build your professional career, you, you could do it as, as Eftalia as Italia has done. And, and so we cannot wait to see, yeah, as I said, what's next. Please keep in touch. And well, um, thank you for having me. No, thank you. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk uh, in another, another time and stay tuned for the next guest. You're going to love it as well. Um, uh, we're not going to say who it is. So you, you keep <laughs> eyes open uh, and you follow us on on social media but uh it's a great guest to 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 close the year anyway thank you so much Italia. i speak to you soon thank you guys thank you be safe bye -bye. thank you bye 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 Estalia, te tengo todavía aquí te lo di las gracias que ya he cerrado el el el, el live finalizar ahora Compartir en IGTV y ya luego lo hago. Vale, fenomenal. Ver, espera que ya... tengo el... Ay, es que ahora no me escuchas. <risa> ahora. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo te has sentido? Bien, bien, bien. Tenía como, tenía el, el perro, te juro, lo tenía detrás ahí en el, en el patio de atrás que iba corriendo y ladrando de mal. Ah, no, pues vamos, yo no he oído nada, ¿eh? Súper no, bien. No. Súper bien, el sonido, la, la, la imagen, todo, todo. Eh, me ha encantado, me ha encantado. Espero que te hayas estado cómoda. Creo que hemos... Se podía profundizar mucho más en muchos de los, de los temas que has sacado. Pero bueno, la idea es al final darles una idea como general un poco de, de tu recorrido y de... Joder, es una pasada todo lo que has conseguido en cuatro años. Eres súper joven. Eh... Cuatro vidas en una. Sí, 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 sí. La verdad que bueno, 